Hey, what's up? This is Deasis from Jassix, and it's been a while since I have done a video like this, but a lot of people have been wondering what I'm doing with all my cars. I know that um, you guys were asking me about the Celica that I saved from the junkyard recently. It was an 86 Celica GTS, and it was two weeks away from getting crushed, and I pulled it out of the tow lot where it was, and restored it and I sold it for a pretty penny and you know it really didn't take a whole lot to get that car going but um, a lot of people seem to really be curious about what I'm doing with these cars so I figured I would make a video about it so this is my newest project this is an 87 Supra Mark III target top all right now guys listen yes it is an automatic no, it is not a turbo. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, but I wanted one that was fairly reliable. I'm not going to be racing it or anything. I am personally getting too old for that. And this is going to be my cruiser. So my main goal is to make it reliable. All right. Now, when I got this car, it was rusty as hell. I'm going to put some pictures in the video. And this is going to be my part one. And hopefully by the time these videos are done, the car will be fully restored and really something nice to look at. I actually did that with this Firebird right here. This is my 84 Trans Am. This car sat for years, needed engine work, paint was burned off of it. And while it is very dirty, it's actually in very good condition now. You should have seen it before. Everything works on it except for the AC. And damn thing had plants growing out of it. So this is what I do. I take cars that are destined for the junkyard and I try to make them nice. Wouldn't call myself a full restoration person. That's just too much money. But this one right here, it had rust all the way on the bottom of it, sanded the hell out of it, painted it. Gonna still be working on some rust. This car has been kind of left for dead. So the transmission in it shifts really smooth. And I need some work though, I need some trim. Uh, need some interior parts. AC is not working. Heat works great. As you can see, more rust. And I'm pretty sure that this car would have went to the junkyard too had I not saved it. So, I'm going to be saving it. Needs a front spoiler. Definitely some cooler wheels. I was thinking about some Crown Vic wheels. Because they are 16 by 7 or 8. They're really retro looking. They look kind of uh, period correct, and I want something that looks really 80s since this is a badass 80s car. Has a blown head gasket. What super doesn't, right? They all have blown head gaskets, especially 7Ms. So 7Ms and 7M GTEs are famous for having blown head gaskets. They weren't torqued right from the factory, supposedly, and they always blow. So this one's not too bad yet. It's not leaking into the bottom end. These are also known for rod bearing issues. Uh, this one seems pretty solid, so lucky. The owner said that it had a parasitic draw. I've cleaned up some of the wires. I have not seen any kind of parasitic draw yet. Uh, the VSV wires down here, actually, underneath the intake manifold, they were killing the EFI fuse. So, got that fixed, got all these changed out, kind of cleaned them up. Fog lights did not work. Changed out the fuse, cleaned one of them out, checked all the wires. And now they all work good. That power window right there did not work. So, these are known for that, by the way. Power windows, especially on the passenger side, for some reason, they quit working. Well, the quickest way that I have seen to fix those is to simply 
put oil in them. So I found some oil, sprayed it with a bunch of WD-40, and the window works. So a lot of times that's all that they need. Toyotas are really good about not blowing the power window motors. They're more known for the buttons sticking and failing. So I think that's about all I got for now. Hopefully in the next video you see this, I'm gonna be down at my buddy's shop and we're gonna be working on the head gasket and some other stuff. It's also got a burned out injector connector over here. So the kit that I bought it from said that they tried to hook an aftermarket stereo to it and basically messed up the wiring harness. Okay, don't know who that was. Uh, basically screwed up the wiring harness and you can see evidence of that. Like I said, somewhere, some places there's kind of burnt out connectors. Um, just replaced the hood struts. So now it closes real nice. Oiled the hinges on the target top. Now they're nice and quiet and they break freely very easily. Right now I am working on the trunk lid. So before this did not have a spoiler. So my good buddy Jeff down at Toys Unlimited over in Burlington, North Carolina, which is I'd say about an hour from where I live. He was nice enough to sell me a trunk lid. And so here it is. Now right now what I'm doing is trying to adjust it because right now it's not really closing where I want it to close. And I don't know if I can do anything about that. I'm trying to move the hinges around and shift it. It's not rubbing, but it's too damn close for comfort. You can see over here, there's a big gap. So hold on, let me close it for you real quick. I'll show you. So right now there's a gap right here. I'm trying to figure out how to move that. The only way that I know how to move that is through the hinges. So, if you guys have any ideas about that, feel free to chime in. And if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. I also need these trim panels or moldings. Supers are known for this. They break off. And honestly, another thing that happens to them is that they, the backing of them, the backing of these, it gets rusty. They get brittle, they swell up. The rubber doesn't stick to them anymore. And then when you open the door, it peels them both off. So that kind of sucks. But every car has its flaws. This Trans Am included. I really need to wash these damn things. So it's springtime in North Carolina, which I'm originally from Florida. We don't have that kind of pollen shit down there. And the pollen is the worst in the springtime. So, I'm going to keep working on this. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm just trying to go over everything that I know about Supras. Double wishbone suspension, control arms are known for failing on them, especially ball joints. So, definitely check that out if you decide to get one of these, because front ball joints are usually a problem. Somehow, I got lucky. These ones are actually good. They're nice and tight. There's no squeak. There's no noise. There's no anything. They're just nice and tight. One day I'll probably talk about this car too, which you see here a few years ago was a hunk of junk, honestly. He was faded. And this car was destined for the junkyard, did not have these wheels on it. There was paint all over these tail lights. I've done my best to kind of clean them up a little bit. But this car was actually in the process of being parted out when I bought it. Like I said, I just got a thing for restoring cars. And I mean, my main favorite are Japanese 80s cars. To me, they are just the most badass. Everybody talks about how slow they are and this, that, and the other. I don't care how slow they are or how shitty you think they are, okay? Conquest Supras, RX-7s, 300ZXs are badass as hell. So, care less what you think is 
fast. And no, I don't want to talk about a Skyline. I want to talk about a Honda. I'm talking about Jassic cars, Japanese classic cars. The badass cool shit that really kind of set the standard for what an 80s Japanese sports car or car should be. So, stay tuned and I will be keeping you guys posted on my progress of this awesome, awesome automobile. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Oh, one more thing too. It's only got one key. Now, blanks for these are kind of obsolete. You can still get them, but they're kind of special order. So that's another thing to kind of pay attention to and to be in the know about. Also need to get this power steering fixed. So the racks on these are usually pretty good. Uh, power steering on this one's leaking now. I have seen that on Toyotas where the power steering pressure lines will leak. I've seen that on the Celica GTSs and the Supras. These coolant hoses right here are known to fail. Temperature gauge is not working because as you can see, it is not hooked up. And yeah, so that's where I'm at so far. Stay tuned. I almost forgot to mention, so for anyone wanting to swap out a trunk lid, first of all, these are heavy as hell. This is a two-man job, unless you are strong as fuck, okay? So to get this off, what you have to do is you have to unbolt that screw right there, that screw right there, seat belts, seat belts and then you have to be very careful about lowering these these are dry rotted they will crack they will break i would suggest putting a little oil or grease on them to hinge them or to make them less squeaky when you put them back on and you'll have a connector here and you'll have a line for the washer reservoir or washer fluid right there and then here you will have a line that connects to the antenna. I think it's the antenna, no, 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 that's not right. Defroster, sorry. Okay, so to get these off, by the way, these hinges, many times they will not come off, so do not sit there and hammer on them, you will break them. The best way that I have seen to do these, okay? First off, you have to take off these pillars in here. What you gotta do with these is take them off with a wrench and just unscrew them and leave the heads on the trunk lid, okay? So that's one thing that you will wanna do with these. Otherwise, you can break them and that would suck because you'll have to weld the little joints back on so that they go back on. Um, I use silicone to get off the rubber because this was a nightmare in here. See this right here? This was an absolute nightmare. The rubber is I wouldn't say it's really dry rotted. They hold up well, you know, because they're kind of out of direct sunlight, but they still get very firm and very brittle. Silicone. Silicone is your best friend. So use silicone to get them back on. It will kind of soften them up for the time being enough to be able to get them back on. And it works very, very well. You know, this was hard as a rock yesterday and now it's fairly soft. So that was my tip on how to get that trunk lid off. All right, so now I'm really gonna go this time, like for real. All right.